afternoon, everybody. Kings Code going to be the last. Kings Code moving in. They're set to go. And uh, they're off, racing away for the first event of the Qatar Goodwood Festival of 2024. It's the Coral Chesterfield Cup over the mile and a quarter, and it's Killy Beggs Warrior, who's wearing cheap pieces for the first time. He's the first one to show. Now joined toward the outside by Tony Montana. Close up then is Max Mayhem in that dark blue jacket with the yellow cap. With those stay well and loyal touch, a little deeper to Wadeke Gomez in those black and yellow colors, just in advance of King's Code in the black and pink. And then came Take Heart, the Greys, a place better than Crack Shot. Enfajar some way back through them with Bystander and Timesius Fox. They're not going overly quickly at the moment. Towards the rear of the field is Real Gain. He's together with Dual Identity at this point as they race up the hill. Track of time has been encouraged along for a few strides. Aryan Power is on his inside and Uzo, who went early to post, is the back marker. They're about to make the sweeping bend back towards the top bend then and heading the way towards the home straight. And it's Max Mayhem who leads by a length and a half to Wadeke Gomez who runs in second. Tony Montana in those violet silks in third. Then came Take Heart the Grey in fourth from the orange silks of Killybeg's Warrior. Stay Will is just in behind him. Then Loyal Touch in the white and blue. Followed another length then back by Crack Shot and Bystander and then came King's Code. Further behind then to see Timesius Fox ahead of Jewel Eye Identity, and then came Crack Shot. Enfajar poised on the wide outside of the field, being tracked by Real Gain. Uzo still right toward the back as they continue up the home straight and make their way down towards the final quarter of a mile. It's the grey. Take heart under Ben Cohn, who's now come through to put it up to Max Mayhem. Just in behind them is Tony Montana, then Killybeg's Warrior. Enfajar now sent about his work at the cutaway point, and then came Stay Well, racing inside the final furlong. Now it's Take Heart with Max Mayhem battling away along the inside. Enfajar trying to get their wider out, trying to launch his effort. It's Take Heart from Enfajar near the line. Take Heart from Enfajar. Take Heart has won the Chesterfield Cup from Enfajar. Tony Montana and Max Mayhem. Then dual identity and bystander. Take Heart has won and has worn those cheek pieces for a second time, settling better than in, in this time and was able to get a good position. The pace largely holding up in this opening Chesterfield Cup. Ben Cohen on board for Johnny Murta and they will be teening up later on as well in the Group 3 event. Uh, the Group 2 event, sorry, the Lennox later on. In second, it's Enfajar, who's come from a long way back and just failed to get there for Jim Crowley and Roger Varian. Third was Tony Montana for David Egan and Michael Bell. He attained a prominent position. And fourth was the leader, eventual leader, Max Mayhem for Kieran Mark and Hillel Kabasi. But that is the winner. Take heart, an Irish raider is the way that we open our meeting. Yeah, he's uh, won that nicely from a very good position. As you, as you say, Lydia, the pace has held up very well here and um, they've just got nice, even fractions, not crazy. And those on the front end were able to get away at a crucial point. The only real closer was Enfajar, to be honest with you. Not, a, not an awful lot has closed from the back, but. Um, the winner at this point, Ben Cohen's asked him to stretch. He has done. He's away gone. And I think he's just stolen vital lengths mm. from Enfajar at a real crucial point. He's been unfortunate, hasn't he, Enfajar? He's still run a very mighty race in second. Those who have backed him won't want to hear that. But let's have a look at him from the start and keep an eye on stall 13 and see what happened in the early stages because that was crucial. The side-on shot doesn't show you as much as you'd ideally want, but there you are. He's just dropped out. They, they decide to, Jim Crowley decides to take him back, whereas Tony Montana, David Egan, has a different plan from the adjacent stall and goes forward on him. They've actually sort of applied opposite tactics to, to what York. we expected. And yeah, exactly. So David was positive. Tony Montana actually got into his stride really nicely, uh, took over the lead from Killybeg's Warrior and just went some nice even fractions. And as you say, Jim Crowley wasn't in a rush on Enfajar just let him slot into a position sort of halfway but he ended up just trapped three wide because of obviously that wider draw and um, he had a smooth passage around Jim but he just lost those lengths early doors that effectively the winner has managed to steal on him and you can see at, at this point Ben Cohen just a little bit wide let's take heart go forward and just gets up behind the leaders yeah, and having gone forward, David Egan has slotted in on Tony Montana against the rail. And up ahead of him is the eventual fourth, Max Mayhem. And Kieran Schumacher has just applied the brakes also. Yeah, just as they hit 
the rising ground into that bend, which takes them into the home straight. They've taken a bit of a pull, full, fill up their lungs before running downhill. And, you know, you can see the winner here. He is a bit keen. When they hit that downhill run, he just launches into the bridle. And Ben Cohen's having to take back and not sort of go for him too soon. He's obviously wanting to use that turn of foot as late as possibly can. And he didn't look as one pace today. He actually showed a nicer turn of foot and uh, the cheap pieces have actually worked this time. Mm. Um, I think because he got into that better rhythm early and you can see here he's cruised to the front and it was just a matter of when he pressed the button. And at this point MCR is vainly trying to make up the ground. I'm looking for further back for the traditional hard luck stories. Dual Identity has had to wait for the cutaway to deliver his challenge on the inside and the fact that he's quite a quick horse might have helped him to get into, I think, fifth. Yep, he has managed to run on a bit, hasn't he? He's passed horses late on, but he's kind of the only one, really, that made an awful lot of ground up from further back. Uh, bystander, he's sort of been halfway and also had to wait for the cutaway, but I don't think that's really hindered his chances too much. Um, Killy Bakes Warrior has run better in the yep. first time. Cheap pieces again. I wonder if there's a sort of running out of time nearly for the July course again. But um, it wouldn't be a surprise to see him back in the winner's enclosure at some point. But M for Jar, he is the only one really that you might argue was a bit unlucky. Just with the position he was in in the race, he's the one that's made up the most ground. But the winner had set sail for home and uh, he's still on the race by this point. As you can see there from that head-on shot, crack shot was pulled up by Jamie Spencer, but it's been reported to me that he's walked back in OK. We'll bring you further news on him if we have it, but Jamie Spencer clearly thinking discretion is the better part of valour. But this is how we open the Goodwood Festival, the Catter Festival in 2024, with the Chesterfield Cup success going to Johnny Murta and his stable jockey, Ben Cohen. They've teamed up for success here before in the past. They'll be hoping for more in the Lennox Stakes Group 2 later with Chicago critic but they'll take take heart winning this first yeah good start uh, for Johnny Merton Ben Cohen take hearts one from stall 18 beating Emfjar came out of stall 13 and perhaps given how the race was run uh, Emfjar was a bit too far back the finishing speed percentage of the winner 115.19 mm. it was a very steadily run race where horses were able to save energy for a strong finish Exactly what happened here with the winner in the penultimate furlong doing a sub-11 second 